Today, we're gonna to be putting in a Moats quarter horse. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video because I've got something pretty important that I wanna talk about. In this video, we're gonna be putting a Moats quarter horse in the Retro Fox. Guys, I'm gonna take you through step by step. It's gonna be pretty easy, but I'll put the camera in the car, show you how to get the computer out, lay it up here on the table, and we will go through this together because I've never put one in it's pretty easy for the most part. There's a few things you need to bend out of the way. And we're also gonna talk a little bit about the software that you're gonna need to tune this thing. Now remember, if you're gonna get your car remote tuned, you're gonna have to buy the software to go along with this, right? Your computer needs to have the software. So that's super important. Guys, don't go out and buy the quarter horse, stick it in your car and you know call up the tuner. It doesn't work that way. Whatever computer is plugged into it needs to have the software on it. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so as most of you know, your computer is right here. Um, you typically don't have to take out your door seal. Just reach up here and pull this thing out. You may have a pin here. It's usually not that big of a deal though. Get this out of the way. And here's your computer. Now these things have a cage on them from the factory. So you may have to take this little cage off right here but uh, typically it's not that big of a deal. Now, the way I like to get these computers out, because they can be a little tricky, is pull it out towards you like this, to where you can go ahead and access this 10 millimeter. We're gonna put a socket on this thing, take this bolt out, and this will allow the connection to come off of the computer. All right, connection should come off. Just move it out of the way, and you should be able to wiggle this computer out just like that now we're going to have to make a modification to the actual plug itself so we're going to deep in one of the wires that are going in here we'll talk about all that later though and put in a new wire now everybody doesn't have to do this if you're taking your car to a dyno where they can just put the sniffer in the back of it back there tell you what your air fuel ratio is you should be pretty good but for us we're going to need this done okay first things first we have to get the cage off the cover so we have some torx head here here and here this is our j3 port right here so as you can see, it's still got the grease and all that stuff on it from the factory. Clean all that off and go ahead and get ready to install this thing. So now that we got the port clean, we'll go ahead and unbox our quarter horse. So here's what comes in the box. So there's different chips and things you can get from moats. You want the quarter horse though. Well, I say you do. If you wanna be able to tune your own vehicle, this is what you're gonna want. This is real time tuning and data logging through the computer. So this is for the EEC four and five. And this is what we're looking for here. Here's the magic. So this does come with your cables, everything that you're gonna need just like that, it's pretty simple. Okay, everything's nice and clean. Yes, I know my fingernails are disgusting guys, but I use them and uh, <laughs> that's all I can tell you. They're not going anywhere. Go ahead and pop our battery in. That seems to be connected. Okay, all right, so this is where we're gonna have to move a few things around. As you're gonna see almost immediately this isn't gonna wanna fit. This piece is what connects right here. So it slides over this and makes a connection. So just like that, all right? Well, there's things in the way here. So let's look, be smart about this and only move things that we absolutely have to. This particular piece is probably going to have to be turned and very gently lay down out of the way. This over here needs to lay down as well.
Okay. So that's it. Everything is locked in. Should be secure, but let's pull this back off so I can show you guys exactly what we did here. Now, not all these computers are laid out the same from my understanding, but on this one, we laid down this, 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 and this, okay? So that should be good. I don't see any other issues there. As you can see. All right, well, I would call that good. So now what we have to do is come in and put our cable in. Now these will go on, these are for interference. Uh, to help reduce it so you can put one right outside of the computer and then clamp one on up here like this they recommend that you do two but you only have to do one i think only one is necessary next little issue here so this is in the way and we're probably going to have to lay both of these down okay that looks pretty good Guys, that's pretty much it. That's gonna be the install portion, the hardware portion of your quarter horse. But let me show you real quick like what they recommend on this. So we'll just take this and clip it on somewhere on the outside here. Should be good. So, and you can move this. So I'll probably just move it out here like that. All right, so there's that. As you can see, that's kind of tight right there. So we don't want that. I know not everybody's gonna have a Dremel handy so i tell you what let's just take uh some snips and snip this off right over here all right so we just cut out that section a little bit wider to get it away from that cable from here you can go ahead and tape this up with electrical tape or whatever that's probably what i'm going to do just so nothing hits it and rubs on it but that's the install portion of this. That's how easy this is. So now all we got to do is get this back in the car and get our software loaded up and we should be good to go. Now, this is not going to be a first tune or anything like that. Uh, we're not ready for that. That will be in another video. Now, from here, I will tell you, your car is probably not going to run uh, with this. So just take note of that. You're going to need to go ahead and put a tune on it. So make sure you have your software. So I'll show you what I did after we got everything hooked up. I just came in and wrapped some electrical tape around this. That way there's nothing bare showing because you don't, you don't know what's up in there that might touch. So uh, just wrap some electrical tape around it and the wire itself. And then I just enlarged the hole a little bit more and then took a piece of vacuum line and split the vacuum line down the middle and just wrap that around it. So I'll show you how that fits. You can do whatever modifications you need to do to make it work for you. So as you can see, nothing's gonna touch, nothing's gonna rub there. So I call that a success. That makes me feel good that I know nothing's gonna rub, so. All right, well, that's it. I went ahead and stuck the decal on it because, well, I'm silly like that. But that should be all we have to do with the computer. Now we need to get a laptop set up with the program in it so that we can go ahead and throw a tune on this thing, just a stock tune for now. And Matt, obviously, at Leach Motorsports is going to be tuning this thing, so he's going to send me over like a startup tune to get this thing kind of close, and then we're going to start data logging and all that. But there's one other thing that we have to do to make this work for us which is run the yellow wire from our wideband over to pin 27 on the computer. It's actually really simple to do. All you gotta do is D-pin, meaning just pull the pin out that goes to 27. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the EGR sensor. It's what that wire goes to that we're gonna be pulling out of the computer. Just gonna pull it out, tape it up, get it up out of the way, and just run a new one in from the wideband with these pins. Now these pins, are kind of hard to come by but you can get them on amazon when uh matt was over from leech he hooked me up with some of these so there you go but uh we're only going to need one of these pretty simple to do solder it on pop it down in the computer good to go all right we'll show you how to do that in just a second uh, the software company a little bit of information about your machine and there's a, a screen you go to within binary editor to do that so you can install the software with no license at all it's a free download, nothing stops you from getting to it. You just can't use it properly until it's licensed. 
Um, so this is really the start. All right, so I just got off the phone with Matt over at Leach Motorsports and he has some videos that help you get started. I mean, from scratch. So he sent me over the videos, I'm playing them now, I'm going through everything and this tells you, you know, pretty much everything that you're gonna need to get started. We've already got it loaded up on the computer, so let me just kind of go through this with you. It was very simple to do. So I had to go to EEC Analyzer, download the program, throw it on the computer, good to go. As you can see, it's already loaded up on the computer right here. Uh, and it does come up, it does work. Now I chose to go with the USB dongle, and the difference here is, I think I mentioned it before, uh, no matter which computer I go to, I can always tune my car. So something happens to this computer, I can just plug this into another and we're good to go. That's honestly what I recommend you do, but it will save you a little bit of money if you just go for the registration code. And I think it's like 50 bucks or something like that per computer. So like if you wanted to add another code to be able to tune off of another computer or something like that, I think it's like 50 bucks. But I just say go ahead, get the dongle, put that thing in a safe location though, because if you lose it, that's it. It's gotta be in the computer whenever you're tuning. But uh, I'll put everything up on the screen for you guys. Please, please go check out Leach Motorsports on this, though. Don't just assume you know what you're doing if you've never done it before, like I typically tend to do. <laughs> just go ahead, watch these videos, and he'll get you squared away. I'm going to touch up on these things real quick, like, figure out what it is we got to do, and I'll pick back up with you guys in just a second. All right, we're going to go ahead, solder up this wire right here, get it ready. Like I said, these connectors can be bought on Amazon. So maybe that's enough solder to make it stick. We'll see. Yep. All right, then we'll just fold these over. So there you go. This should plug into the computer and then we're just going to take this wire at the other end and run it over to the uh, wide band. So we'll show you which one to depin and how to do it. Get back to you in just a second. Uh, pin 27 is what we're looking at. And as you can see, Andrew is pulling the little lock out. So the red lock is what you need to release so that you can uh, pull these pins out. Or one pin. We just, we just want one pin to come out. We don't want all of them to come out. But uh, I just wanted to show you that part right there. So once you find uh, pin 27, uh, you can go ahead and pull that thing out. If you're curious as to what the wire looks like, what color it looks like, uh, what it is, pin 27 is your EGR plug. So if you can go right here, you're not gonna be able to really see it, but that uh, brown and green wire is the one that you're looking for. It's gonna be the same exact wire that goes down to the computer. Um, so we're just depinning that and then we're going to take this new wire right here and we're going to put it in the place of it in that connector. So I'll show you all that once it's done and then we'll run everything over to the wide band and hook it up. Now I know this probably seems confusing. Uh, not everybody's going to have to do this, but for us remote tuning, this is a must. You pretty much got to have this. Otherwise your tuner is not going to know what your car is doing. So. Uh, obviously you can see it if, with your wide band, but he's not going to be able to see it. So anyway, that's why we're doing this. Uh, but I'll get back to you as soon as we're done. All right. So as you can see, we have the pin out and the new one in. See. Obviously after that, go in and check all of your pins. Now on this plug here, we're just going to wrap it up. Oh right there with electrical tape just wrap it up and get it out of the way that was that what you're telling me to do is wrap it up with electrical yeah. tape so get Andrew it wrap it up with some electrical tape get it out of the way and uh, so there again guys all this is going to do uh, we're going to run it over here it's going to come back over and hook to our wide band so I'll get back to you whenever we pull that down and make the connection it should be the yellow wire on the wide band all right, so I had to finally get under here and get these wires ran, <laughs> but uh, I did get it up through the dash. <laughs> Here's the connections right here. So the yellow wire is the one that we need to attach. So Andrew is gonna do that for us now. And guys, that's that's pretty much it. That's gonna wrap this you up. You want me to cut it back? You want me to cut yeah, slack out of it? Just, 
work. This cut a little bit back, I guess. Whatever you think. What are you doing? I don't care, man. Give me some actual wire strippers and stop making me strip them with these 1998 Harbor Freight dikes. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> I'm gonna rip every wire I want to dash this bitch before I'm done. Well, look, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. There's not much else to show. Um, I think this is gonna work out pretty good. We should get our tune tomorrow, and then we're just gonna start the tuning process. It's gonna take a little while. All right, look, we're going to go ahead and finish this up. I'm going to wrap this video up. And as always, thanks, thanks for watching. It's a good job. Man. You did a good job. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for hanging around. So I want to give a huge shout out to Demon Fox 5.0 for sending me some awesome shirts right here. Uh, you guys go check him out on YouTube, Demon Fox 5.0. Really awesome channel. I'll put it up for you right here. Super cool guy and... He's got a Turbo Fox body, so you know I'm gonna wear him. Also, with this shirt right here, there was a huge like mishap with this, right? So I don't know, some of you guys probably know what's going on, but there is already a Fox Body Motorsports on Instagram. I was unaware of it. His uh, page is Fox Body Motorsports, and his design is, well, obviously pretty similar to mine. So I'll put that up for you right now. Look, I wanna give him a huge shout out because he was super cool about this. It was just a misunderstanding, a coincidence, if you will. Um, I didn't research to look if anybody had Fox Body Motorsports. I just, you know, I do my own thing. And uh, it was something that I probably should have looked into a little bit more, but you guys know me, I try to do my own thing. I'm not trying to copy anybody. It was just an honest mistake. But like I said, shout out to him, super cool guy. Like we've talked a few times since then. It was funny because when he messaged me, uh, about it I realized that we had already talked back in like like I said 2019 so but uh, anyway you guys go check him out over on Instagram I'll put all his information up right now and uh, also I want to do a few more shout outs for some guys that sent some other stuff here it is all right so you know you guys are always looking out for me and uh, somebody offered up a speedometer cable for the channel so we now have a brand new speedometer cable and uh, eh, we might put it in the Calypso. I don't know. I know that aggravates a lot of different people, but uh, this also came with a letter. So I'm going to go ahead and read that now. So the letter says, Nakia, here's a speedometer cable that I just bought from LMR. My cluster was bad. Hopefully you can put it to good use. Uh, it was nice to meet you. Love the channel. Anyway, Keith, man, seriously, huge shout out to you for sending that. And uh, the Clipso does need a speedometer cable, so we're gonna put that thing to use at some point here pretty soon. We also got another box lurking around here somewhere. Let me find this thing, where's it at? Where is it at, where's it at, where's it at? Where the hell did the box go? Aha, there it is. Zero easy box. We have something for the Arctic Fox here. All right, check it out, guys. We got a set of headlights for Andrew's car, and these are in a lot better shape than his. These shouldn't require any more than just a little bit of a scuff and a buff. So, uh, yeah, I think these, these may be factory headlights. I'm not sure. So, uh, Rich sent us these headlights, and I do thank you so much, man. That's good looking out from the community. Uh, it helps us keep things going, right? So, uh, we'll get these things in. Also, I've got something else to talk to you guys about, but not in this particular video. Well, look. Thank you guys for sending everything. Seriously, huge shout out to all of you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. And as always, thanks for watching.